I'm Patrick Murphy Racy, a Sony artisan of imagery, and today we're going to unbox the brand new Sony A6600, which is due to start shipping on November 29th of 2019. Um, this camera, um, y'all know I kind of mostly talk about the A9 and the A9 II, but not everybody can afford or justify the cost of the A9 or the A9 II. And um, in my opinion, the uh, A6600 is absolutely the next best thing in terms of being able to shoot sports on a crop sensor. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up and we'll see what we got. And uh, I brought a battery. Part of my big decision to get the A6600 was the fact that it takes the Z battery. And it actually, I was so pleased and kind of shocked, um, but really happy that they made the decision to make the A6600 with the Z battery, that it caused me to immediately sell my A6000, my A6300, and even my A6500. So I got rid of three cameras, and it kind of pains me to say this, but I also sold my RX10 too, in hopes that they're gonna do an RX10 series camera with the Z battery. But uh, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up. There's the box, little tiny box, little tiny camera. Pretty cool. The books inside weigh probably as much as the camera does, which is kind of humorous and comical. Um, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is take the instruction manual and toss it because I'm a photographer. We don't really like to read instruction manuals. We like to figure stuff out on our own. Here's a little pristine bag kind of thing. And inside is the new camera. So. The most important part about this camera for me is this, that I can put this, this is right out of my A9, I can, I can now share a battery. Um, and the, the fact that the camera's grip is so awesome, if this feels great in my hands, not as good as an A9 or an A9 II, um, but I probably would rather hold on to this than, well, certainly any other APS-C camera that they've made so far. So. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, now, also in the box is going to be the strap, which I virtually never use because I use like something else. Um, this is very important inside is the, uh, <clears throat> the USB cable. Sony really recommends that when you do firmware updates that you use the cable that's supplied with the camera, and I have found this to be true. I've tried some phone charging cables that just didn't work. And so uh, what I usually do is leave this in the box because I know where to find it. Um, it also comes with uh, a little charger piece um, like that I can now plug in the I can plug in the the cord into the USB socket and I can charge on a battery but also I want to point out that you can also plug this into your uh, where you charge your phone in your car you can literally drive around in between assignments charging the battery which a lot of people don't realize especially come from DSLRs because None of them have that capability that I'm aware of. Um, there's a little eye cup here. Um, I typically lose these really fast, so I leave it in the box too. <laughs> and then the battery. Uh, so I'm gonna take this battery out, but I have a fully charged battery that I'm gonna use um, right off the bat so I can take this brand new battery and I can put it on a long charge. Um, I like to leave them on you know, fully for like a day just to cook them so that first time is good. Um, there, there is, uh, let's see if there's anything else underneath here. So I don't think so. I think that's everything it is. So, um, the one thing that's kind of cool, uh, about the, the more recent, um, cameras from Sony is that, um, here it is. It says, uh, a 6600 interchangeable lens camera. And it says about the manual for this camera. And then it sends you to the web. Yeah, that's great. Why waste money printing when this thing is going to be updated at some point and its, its features and um, its options will improve uh, over time. So one of the cool things about buying a Sony is that you can uh, count on Sony in the future after you purchase the camera. They're going to keep up with you. They're going to keep updating firmware and giving you added value to your original investment. Um, this is a huge part of why I'm a Sony photographer. I don't 
shoot the stuff I used to anymore. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to kind of put all this back in here. The stuff I'm not going to take out. All the stuff I'm going to lose, like the eye cup, I just leave it in here. Um, also, the eye cup, using the eye cup um, pushes my eye a little bit further away from um, the viewfinder. And because I wear glasses, I find a lot better luck. I have a lot better luck using uh, the cameras without, um, without the eye cup. Um, the last thing I want to do in this video is just kind of talk a little bit about the A6600 and how it kind of interrelates to the A6000, the A6300, the A6400, and the A6500. Um, first of all, number one for me is that it doesn't take the W battery. I freaking hate the W battery. Um, uh, all the other cameras that came before on the APS-C side and even the A7s, the early A7s before the A7III and the A7R3 and A9, they took this W battery and you always had to have a couple in your pocket, even on a small job to be safe. And the Z batteries are so fantastic. So the Z battery is just a tiny little bit bigger than the W battery, but um, it's just gonna go forever. And so as soon as they announced the A6600, I went on and, and looked at all the specs and when I saw Z battery, I knew that was it for me. So I've like completely Wash my hands of everything W battery, and now uh, with the addition of the A6600, literally this is the only battery I use, which I love. It's great. Um, and then the added benefit is the bigger grip, um, which is not shared by any other APS-C camera. Um, now this camera has the, um, the IBIS in it, like the A6500, so it's gonna have internal uh, body stabilization. So even if you take non-manufacturer lenses, you'll have three axis stabilization on this camera. This camera, because of the added battery life of the Z battery, is gonna affect still photographers in a way that they're not gonna to have to carry extras at all. Um, and more importantly maybe is on the video side of things, um, videographers are, who often are idle for a long period of time, the camera's on for a long period of time, this is going to be great for those of us that shoot video too. So I'm so excited about this. I think this is the number one selling feature of the A6600 is the Z battery. But second to that, it has the IBIS. Third would be the, um, the sensors, the same as the A6500 and the A6300. However, just like an A92 versus A9, while the sensor might be the same, I have every confidence in the world that the camera is going to perform better in low light because they have had all this time uh, to figure out the, um, the processing of the images as, it come, as they come off the sensor, both in stills and in video. So I kind of expect to see at least a stop of dynamic range increase uh, in terms of being able to raise the ISO up a little higher. Just remember that APS-C sensors are smaller than full frame by default, so they can't capture or gather as much light as a full frame sensor. So the full frame cameras are still gonna always be best uh, for low light, but I think this camera is gonna find its way into a lot of high school gyms. Um, so one question um, that some of you might have is, why would I wanna buy this instead of the A6400? Um, the A6400 has no IBIS in it. Um, now it's gonna be a lighter camera because it uses the W battery. It's gonna be a little bit more compact and smaller but unless you're doing like rock climbing, extreme rock, rock climbing, again, I come back to the battery. Because you're gonna get a Z battery in the A6600 and not that much larger or heavier, I would go this way. Um, what about this camera versus the A6500 and the A6300? So the A6500 has IBIS in it, the A6300 does not, um, but you're gonna have the same sensor but with an older processing algorithm. So again, image quality wise, I'm confident. I have not shot this camera yet, it just got out of the box. So I'll be doing a review of it after I've had a chance to shoot it some. But um, I think if you can afford the difference, it's 1300 bucks or $1,400, I think it's $1,399. Um, if you can afford the difference between that and the A6400 or whatever, I think it's gonna be well, well worth it. Um, the last thing is um, this camera, like the A6400 and the A6100, has real-time tracking. Real-time tracking cannot be underestimated in terms of its value to, especially me as a sports photographer. But I have to say that um, sports photography, 
is not the only place I use real-time tracking autofocus. I use it on everything I do, everything. So um, the real-time tracking benefit in the A6600 has got to be better. Now, to be fair, real-time tracking is also present in the A6400 and the A6100. Um, I'm not planning on buying an A6100 uh, because of the W battery that it has, but it's going to be the least expensive way to go, uh, and it has real-time tracking too. So this is a huge thing. So in that lower-end segment, uh, that entry-level um, mirrorless entry into Sony, the A6100 is probably the greatest value, but bang for the buck, if you're actually a working photographer, I think the A6600 is probably the best entry in. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, setting up this camera um, with all the custom functions that I like. And you will be able to find a video on that. I'll put it in the, in the link below. Uh, so if you, if, you just, if you just bought your camera, your A6600, and you're trying to figure out how to set up the, the settings, um, you can go to that YouTube video and, and watch how I set up my camera. Now, you may do a little different, but that's okay. But I do a lot of explanation about how to set it up. And so I would encourage you to go find that video as well. Um, all in all, I'm really pumped about uh, the new Z battery capable A6600. I think this is going to be a fantastic way. How am I going to use this camera? Um, number one, I'm going to use this camera as a remote camera for basketball and probably for soccer, um, even hockey in the goal. There's a, this camera pairs up perfectly with a lens that's uh, the 10 to 18 millimeter f4 OSS lens, phenomenal lens, super wide. It gives you a 15 to 27 millimeter field of view. Um, I also have the uh, the Zeiss branded 24 millimeter 1.8 lens that is designed for APS-C. That gives me a 35 millimeter 1.8 field of view, which is fantastic. It's a great uh, street shooting combination. Um, this camera doesn't look like much, so when you do street photography, it's kind of better to have something smaller and lighter. Um, also, if you're going to walk around New York City for like two days straight and just shoot people, you know, it gets heavy after a while, even a small camera. So I might pick this instead of even an, an A7 III or something like that. Um, but definitely for remote use. And then I think also if I go on vacation, if I'm going to go to Europe for a week or something like that, um, this would be a great camera to take along. Um, I want to also mention one more thing. Um, this is the high end of APS-C now. This is the new flagship in the APS-C series of Sony cameras. They also saw fit when they released this camera and the A6100 to come out with a brand new lens, which is the 16 to 55 2.8. Now that lens is going to be a phenomenal uh, matchup with this. And while expensive, it's exactly the same price as the body. Um, at $1,400, uh, but that combination of this body with the 16 to 55 2.8 is going to be a phenomenal combination, um, and it may get a lot of people to switch, like do a soft switch, where you know now that you have like effectively that lens range, um, it will allow people to kind of do all their short glass and flash with the uh, Sony, and then maybe use an Icon or Canon until they switch the rest of the way. So I don't, I don't I have a lot of hope for this camera uh, for myself. I'm excited to have it. Uh, it is basketball season, so one of the first things I'll be doing is, is bolting this thing up on a backstop or putting making it a floor remote. Um, <clears throat> one of the other huge advantages of the APS-C series cameras from, from Sony is that <clears throat> the lens mount is literally about maybe a 64th of an inch off of the bottom plate. So when you put this camera on the ground on the floor at basketball it's literally on the floor and so when you set it down and, and put it on a floor plate um, or use just something like like this you know sometimes I use my wallet which is like perfect thickness because it's mostly empty because I buy all this stuff but when you put it on there this gets you lower to the ground than really any other camera especially on the 1d and the all the pro cameras from Nikon and Canon have that unremovable grip thing. So there's a lot of advantages to this for remote use. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to stop talking now. And uh, just one last thing. If you are unable to afford and justify the A6600 and the 16-55 to 2.8 lens, the A6100 is probably where you want to look. Um, if you're trying to figure out your next move, maybe for Christmas this year, 
I want to upgrade, I want to get into mirrorless. The A6100 is going to be a really, really good gateway in uh, that won't cost you a million dollars. So that would be something I would consider as well. So I'm going to stop talking now because I kind of go long on these. By the way, I'm shooting this video with two cameras. This is the A7R4 with a 50mm 1.4 lens, which is wide open. And it's set to do eye autofocus, which is awesome. Uh, the audio is being captured by an XLR K2M with a cord running to this lavalier mic from Shure. And then finally up here in the corner is an AX700, which is a true uh, camcorder. It's a high-end camcorder, and that's what's shooting like the camera in my hand. So I've been getting a lot of comments lately of how are you shooting your videos, what are you using? The A7R4 is it. It's like the bomb for doing this kind of stuff because IAF, there's just nothing better than IAF, period. So... Um, Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This is Patrick Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan, saying uh, see you next time.